I've had it with medical doctors, estheticians, skincare brands, all perpetuating the same lie. I was just scrolling through my social media and came across a video by this YouTuber dermatologist that quit practice to become a YouTuber saying how important it is to exfoliate the skin every day because there's all this cellular accumulation on the surface that you have to get rid of so your skin can be brighter and get glass skin. That is all wrong. That's all just theory. That's not true. Exfoliating daily to get good skin is a big lie. Been struggling with breakouts, dryness, sensitivity, premature aging even, chances are exfoliation is at the root of it. The other culprit is your gut, but we'll talk about that in another video. We're tackling exfoliation and why it's probably destroying your skin. And this is not theory, this is practice. I've been in the beauty industry as a certified skincare expert for nearly 30 years now. This is from interfacing with and helping thousands upon thousands of consumers over the years. So let's break the exfoliation myth once and for all. Most people believe that exfoliation every day is necessary to achieve that elusive glow. So peels, microdermabrasions, brushes, scrubs, glycolic acid, you name it. Here's the truth. If you have an issue, exfoliation likely contributed to it. When you follow that advice, your skin will look amazing, but for a short period of time, because if you had all this buildup on the skin, you've exfoliated it, it's gone, you're probably seeing glowing skin, but that's your peak. The more you keep exfoliating, now you're going downhill. Why? Because you're gonna reach that point where you've compromised your lipid barrier and now your skin is open for damage, for inflammation, aging, acne, pigmentation, you name it. Think about this, here's an analogy. Snakes, I hate snakes, but it's a good analogy because they shed their skin. A snake does not need to like slither into a mud bath or a glycolic acid bath for it to shed its skin. That's nature. We as humans were perfectly designed to shed dead skin cells. If you look around, most of the dust in your home is your skin shedding. We don't force our heartbeat, we don't force our breath. Why are we forcing dead skin shedding? Skin naturally exfoliates through this process called desquamation. Here is how it works. Skin cells are born in the basal layer. That is the deepest layer of the epidermis. Over about 28 days, and then it takes longer with age, these cells migrate upwards, flattening and filling with keratin as they mature. By the time they reach the surface, they become essentially dead skin cells serving a purpose, forming a protective layer of your skin they serve a function. Then we have these enzymes that come into play and they start breaking those bonds between the dead skin cells, those proteins, allowing for the shedding to happen naturally. The full cycle is regulated by your body's hormone levels, enzymatic activity, pH, and hydration, and of course, overall health. So when we're introducing acids and retinoids, powerful ones, I like gentle ones, and then all these exfoliants and we're scrubbing and doing all this stuff to speed up this process, what's happening, we're also speeding up inflammation, we're also reducing that protective layer on the surface, and at some point, your skin cannot make new cells as fast as you wish. A lot of us think that there is this mechanism where we're just going to remove dead skin cells and our skin is just going to make new ones and so on. No. First of all, our ability to make new cells is finite. You get to a point where you just tap out. If you exfoliate every day, let's say you've exfoliated four days in a row. Now you've removed all of those layers of dead skin cells that have been sitting on the surface you still have another 24 days or so to go where you're just exfoliating, achieving nothing but inflammation. I really hope that this resonates, that this makes sense so we can all collectively stop the destruction of our skin cells because that's how you're going to achieve healthy skin. When you achieve healthy skin that's able to protect itself, that's not confused, that's when you're gonna see less acne, less rosacea, less wrinkles, and so on. After saying all this, I'm here to say exfoliation is not the enemy. Over exfoliation is or overuse of it. So there are so many different options on the market right now with exfoliation. A lot of people think that different ingredients achieve different results. Not really. 
if it's in the class of exfoliants, they're all achieving the same thing. What I mean is, you can't go and get that chemical peel and then start applying all these retinoids and then at home you're using a scrub and then you have a brush or a cognac sponge. You get the point. There are so many different methods to get us to the same result. So you have to identify the exfoliant that works for you and there's absolutely no way that you should be using any type of exfoliant on a daily basis. So I cringe when I see all these toners, for example, your daily exfoliating toner or daily exfoliating cleanser and whatever, you don't need those. I own an exfoliating cleanser, it's in the shower and I use it every once in a while. It's never daily. It's if I'm washing my face and I feel some texture, I'm like, okay, time to grab that. It should never be used daily, even if it says it, on the packaging. It's literally how the beauty industry makes its money. You're spending money on a product that's damaging your skin, that's causing dryness, that's causing issues. Now you're back to the store or online researching how do I fix this issue? And now you're being offered another type of exfoliant <laughs> to fix that issue and you're in that vicious cycle. Skincare is so simple. We really are limited on the options no matter what they're called. You can call it glycolic acid, you can also call it a scrub, you can whatever you want to call it. Of course, they work slightly differently. They have different concentrations, different penetration levels in the skin and so on. But the end result is the same. I can already imagine all the people going to the comments and saying, you're wrong, I've had great experience with this peel or whatever, but I'm here to tell you it's all very short term. You have the one face for the rest of your life. Come back when you've used that peel multiple times for over a year or you've done multiple types of exfoliation over a period of time and then you'll see the decline in your skin. Also, please, if you've had any reaction, any negative reaction to a product or a group of products or a routine or a procedure, please let us know in the comments. Let's learn from everyone else's experience. Let's look into the comments section to share experiences so that we all learn from real people's experience that adopted this advice and these methods and have seen those negative results. You're probably wondering, what do I do? I'll tell you what I do for myself and what I recommend to my clients. Something I've lived by for a long time now, and I'm 48 years old, I've been in the beauty industry since I was 19 years old. I hardly ever exfoliated in my 20s or even 30s. When I say hardly ever, it's literally every couple months. I was very sensitive, I couldn't tolerate much, so I left it alone, and I think that's a blessing in disguise. Maybe late 30s, I started exfoliating maybe about once a month. Even when I got into my 40s and started seeing it, decline in elasticity and I started looking at retinoids. I had never used a retinoid or even vitamin C before age 43 years old. But when I started seeing signs of aging at 43, I started going deeper and deeper with my research and trying to figure out ways to exfoliate my skin, gently maintain that collagen, that cellular turnover without harming my sensitive skin. And so all this research combined with my experience over the years working with clients that over exfoliate or clients that don't exfoliate, I guarantee people that under exfoliate have better skin than people that over exfoliate. But anyways, I reached the point where I do what I call, I let my skin tell me when to exfoliate. And by that I mean, I wake up in the morning, I cleanse my skin, I'm feeling it, I'm applying maybe a serum or whatever, and I feel texture. I literally have to feel physical texture or see it. When I apply my tinted sunscreen and I'm like, oh, it's like getting stuck to dead skin cells, that's when I exfoliate. So that's been literally the cadence for many, many years. My goal now is to get myself to exfoliate about once a week. So if you're dry like myself, once a week is great. You maybe you get to your 50s or so, you can do twice a week, but that's if you physically see and feel that texture on the skin, that dryness. So that means those enzymes that typically dissolve the, the glue that holds the proteins together, that hold that, those cells together, if those enzymes are less active, you have less of them, then you help your skin out. You're helping out those enzymes by bringing in those exfoliants to help remove those skin cells that are sitting on the surface. I don't ever see an instance where I would recommend exfoliation more than twice a week. And even that, I don't recommend glycolic, I don't recommend powerful ingredients, high concentrations. There are gentle formulations that do a very good job at removing dead skin cells without causing too much inflammation. And so the, my second piece of advice, aside from not exfoliating daily, is don't fall for this 
idea that you need to go with high actives like you, in the beauty industry there is this tendency to go we have the most powerful formula you know the highest concentration of actives you don't need power <laughs> you don't need high concentration understand that your skin is an organ it's very delicate and you need to maintain that balance we go off balance by being too aggressive by attacking the skin with all of these harsh actives and harsh exfoliants what you're doing you're just speeding up aging in one way or another you could be seeing improvement maybe in your hyperpigmentation it's getting lighter but you'll probably see more wrinkles or seeing less wrinkles but you're seeing more inflammation and redness and rosacea so balance is the sweet spot for skin so when I got fed up with the beauty industry a few years ago and created the beautydoctrine.com and functional beauty principles, which are based on a holistic approach to healing your skin from the inside out and the outside in, it became necessary to create a platform, which is the beautydoctrine.com, where I curate my top recommendations products i vet recommend to my personal clients use myself so you'll find those there you'll find guides you'll find blogs you'll find so many resources that can help you make informed decisions so it's not about layering a ton of skincare it's not about ignoring your skincare but it's about understanding that your skin is an organ that needs to be fed and needs to be hydrated moisturized protected and so your skincare should be about five steps at most every day and then maybe that sixth step would be that once a week exfoliation i go into detail in a lot of my guides like i said and they're personalized so if you have pigmentation look for the pigmentation guide if you are menopausal look for the menopause guide acne and so on there are about 10 guides that you can access on my website i'll give you a link on how to get access directly to those free guides there are also courses there are bundles based on each skin type so utilize the re those resources and let me know what your biggest concern is tell me about your struggles you don't have to book a consultation if you don't want to i can recommend a routine to you in the comment section the comment section is there to help you as well as help others you have experiences with different products different routines modalities share them with us this is for us to all learn from each other. Thank you for hanging out with me. Until the next video, be well, be safe, be beautiful. Take care.